Hey guys, welcome to your Weather Patterns Lab project. All right, this is a, a big weather lab that uh, I usually do every year. It takes us about four or five lab periods to do it. Um, so it's a great way to wrap up the entire unit. It's gonna touch upon everything that we've discussed throughout the entire uh, unit. So um, pay attention. I'll, I'll post a video on each part. Um, this way you guys can break it up day by day or do it all in one shot, it's up to you. Um, it's a pretty decent one. Okay, so uh, this is gonna be due Friday, May 22nd at midnight, basically, all right? So again, I'll, I'll be checking it on the Saturday. Please make sure that you have it done and done in its entirety, okay? Watch the videos, because in the videos I give you a whole lot of useful uh, information. All right, so for day one, you can hit the, get through all the vocab. These are all terms that we've covered in the unit. Um, so I'm not worried about that. A couple things that you should remember. These are a couple of the major, major points that we've discussed, especially our little chart uh, comparing low versus high pressure. Um, you need to know all of this, all right? Um, we'll come back to it. We'll answer a whole bunch of questions on it, but just remember this. Winds are caused when there's pressure gradients, meaning pressure differences. The closer the isobars, the stronger the winds, the more spread apart, the weaker they are. They get their names based on where they come from, blah, blah, blah. You guys should know all that. All right, so we are going to focus on this today, day one. So day one is just talking about map A. All right, you're gonna notice that in this lab, there's four maps, A, B, C, D. So we are only on map A today. And today you're gonna be making isotherms. All right, these are lines that connect points of equal temperature. All right, so isotherms at 10 degree intervals. And here are your rules. All right, so we're going to be making a line for 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, and 20. All right, and you're going to be, each line is going to be a different color, and then we're going to shade in that region. And I'll show you exactly what I mean in a second. Okay, um, before we get into it, let's remember our rules for isotherms or isolines or contour lines or any of that stuff. They either make circles or run off the page. They can never intersect or touch. Lines that are closer together have a higher gradient, and then you will have to calculate gradient. And remember, when you do this, you must have units, okay? So when you do your work, when you show your work, show your work with units, because those will be your units at the end, okay? Lastly, in our station model, the top left is the temperature. So we are gonna be looking at this map and only the top left number is the one that we are paying attention to, okay? So let's get into it. So here is our map A, okay? So we're still on day one. Again, take a look, map A. So make sure you guys are working on the correct map too. If you're on the wrong map, that's gonna suck. Okay, so little daunting, right? There's a ton of uh, weather models up here, but we are only paying attention to temperature, right? Only the top left of these weather station models. So take a look. Let's start at, um, let's pick one in the middle because it'll probably be easier to find. Let's pick, um, let's pick 40. All right, let's start with 40. And if you look at the, the worksheet, it says 40 is going to be done in green. So I'm going to go to green. And now I'm going to find all of the weather station models that have a 40. So here's a 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. And I believe that is it. So now, if you look at this, this is not gonna make a circle, right? You can clearly see that it's gonna just run off the page. So now I'm gonna connect my points. I'm gonna come across like this, like this, 
Remember, you have to run in between the numbers that make sense. So in here, I have to go above Detroit, right? Because that Salt St. Marie is 33 and Detroit is 44. So 40 is going to exist in between that. And then when I run off the page here, I have to go in between Boston and New York like that. Okay, now I'm going to label it just to make my life easier later on. Okay, so that's my 40 line. The next one, let's do 50. 50 is going to be done in yellow. So we're going to do yellow here. Again, find all your 50s. So there's a 50. There's a 50. And I think that is it. There's only two. So you're going to be doing a lot of dancing here. Okay, so... You're going to start by running off the page here. You got to go in between Boise and Salt Lake City. Coming above Denver. You're going to hit Kansas City. Over here, you got to go above Cincinnati. And then over here, this is where it gets tough. Here's Richmond, which is 45, and Hatteras, which is 68. That means in between these two cities, you have to fit a 50 and a 60. So be careful later. So we're going to go like this. Okay, so that's going to be my 50, and I'll do a 60 with you just to make sure you guys get it because that's the toughest part, that little section. So here's 60. I think 60 is one of the tougher lines. So here's 60, mm, Galveston's a 60, Cincinnati is a 60, and that's it. So we got to move quite a bit here. So here's 60 coming in. We're going to be running down. Got to go below Roswell, right? Because 60 exists between 57 and 68. Go to Galveston. Then you're going to run it up to Cincinnati. And then right here, you have to still go between Richmond and Hatteras, but make sure that you do not touch that 50 line. All right, like that. Okay, so you're going to do this for the rest. And then later on, when it says to shade in, this is what it means. So if when it says to shade the entire region, so all of these numbers that are in the 40s have to be shaded in green. So take a look. If this is green, I'm going to the highlighter tool. All of these, this is from 40 to 50. I'm going to shade it in green. Okay. So that everything that is in green is a temperature that is in the 40s. And then over here is all the temperatures that are in the 50s. All right. You guys get the point, I'm sure. All right. Um, for the numbers that are the extremes, um, I know that you have, you have to go all the way down to 20 and all the way up to 70. Um, 70, you only have, I believe, one marker, and it goes all the way to the bottom. And 20, there isn't even any. So 20 is just going to be all the way at the top, even though you don't have any weather stations for it. Okay, so then you guys can uh, handle the rest. As far as, so that's how you're going to do this map. As far as the questions, this part, you are going to use your reference tables, right? The little uh, thermometer converter. Uh, number two, look at your map. What's the temperature trend? Is it increasing or decreasing as you move from the north to the south? Number three, which city is the temperature gradient the greatest? So this is where are the lines the closest? And then here you have to calculate gradient. I will do one of these with you. All right, so again, you always start by writing your formula. 
change in value over distance. And then from Galveston to Kansas City. All right, so if you look, here's Galveston. And here's Kansas City. Okay, Galveston is 60, Kansas City is 50. Okay, so I'm going to go 60 minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember to show your units in your work. And then to get distance, if you guys remember correctly, you need your scale. So take out your scrap paper, measure, um, and figure it out. Since we're on this digitally, uh, remember that whole... Um, I don't know, you freeze your, your page or something like that. Just, uh, you guys know it better than I do. I remember us talking about it in class, but you can freeze your page and kind of do it that way. Um, and when you do measure it for this one, you should get somewhere close to 650 miles. All right, then you do your math and you should get 0 0.015. And your units will be the same units that were in your work, okay? This is what I expect as far as showing work, okay? You have to show the formula, substitute with units, answer with units, and box it, okay? So number five, you have to do the same thing just for two different cities. All right, so that's day one, isotherms and uh, vocab. And uh, I'll post another video for Matt B next. Good luck. Do a good job on this. It's a project. Counts as